So usually when I walk into a room, half the room is waiting for me to be like, yeah, okay, Poppy! And the other half just stares at me like I'm some kind of glitch in the Matrix. They be looking at me like, what the fuck is he? And it gets awkward sometimes. It gets really awkward. Um, Cause I don't know if you guys know this, but Latinos love speaking Spanish to other Latinos. So they see me, skin tone all 50 shades of beige. They see the curly hair, they're like, oh my God, this guy's Dominican. So they start loading their verbal assault rifles and they're like that shirt, they're like, yeah, okay, papi. And when it first happened, I thought I was being smart, right? And I was like, yo, I need this to stop. So I'm gonna tell them that I don't speak Spanish. But my dumb ass said it to them in Spanish. And I thought I was being smart, so I was like, hey, 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 hey. No hablo espanol. And they were like, si, 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 espanol. I was like, no. Yo soy negro. It's crazy, man. Uh, I just moved here from, I just moved to Connecticut from New York City. Um, I like Connecticut. You guys are nice. It's nice here. You guys have things that we just don't get in New York City, like square footage. Like, y'all have space. Y'all have lots of space. And don't get me wrong, like, I love New York City, but at some point you really get tired of paying $2,000 a month to live in a fucking closet. You know what I mean? Like, when I moved out of New York City to come to Connecticut, I went to a pride parade. Because I was like, yo, we all out the closet. It's shit. <laughs> It's great, man. Connecticut is reasonably quiet, too. Like, if someone's screaming at 2 in the morning, they're actually in danger. Like, <laughs> shit is great, man. I used to do a whole lot of shows in Harlem. Harlem's interesting, man, because um, every time I'm in Harlem, I meet somebody who introduces themselves like they're doing a fucking VH1 interview. I'd be like, what's your name, brother? They'd be like, yo, you already know who it is. It's your boy Malik, AKA Crunchy Juice Box from Two Fifth and Lex. You know the rest. Talk to me nice, talk to me twice. Yeah. I'm like, nigga, we are in church. Like, what the fuck? Shit is crazy, man. Um, but me, I'm from the south side of Jamaica, Queens. Uh, neighborhood is tough, I'm not. Um, and growing up in Jamaica, Queens, it's weird because everybody wanted to be in a gang. And I'm just not built for gang culture. Like, look at me, I'm light-skinned, my skin is soft, and I have nice hair. If I go to jail, I'm the closest thing to a bad bitch. And I'm just not setting myself up for failure like that. You know what I mean? Like, if I go to jail, I'm the closest thing to Beyonce, and this ain't that kind of renaissance. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit is crazy, man. What's crazy about my neighborhood is that it's going through gentrification now. So you got a whole lot of shit popping up next shit that don't go together. Like, they got a Starbucks next to the flea market. Right? Like they built a Chipotle next to the homeless shelter. And now all the white people started moving in. They call the homeless shelter by its real name, Walgreens. Like, this shit is crazy, man. What's even crazier is that like you never see the opposite of that, right? Like you never see black people moving into rich white neighborhoods just to open up some hood shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> And that's my mission in life. I want to make it a comedy just so I can buy property in the Upper East Side of Manhattan just to open a fucking Jimmy Jazz. Like, I think <laughs> that shit is beautiful. I want to see white women go on vacation to the Hamptons and see bitches shopping at Rainbow. Like, <laughs> that shit is beautiful to me. Final phase of my plan, buy property, rich white neighborhood. I'm going to open a chicken spot with a strip club in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call it chicken strips, okay? Yeah, man. But yeah, what else I got going on? I just turned 35. Clap it up for me. Uh, at 35 years old, I'm learning to appreciate the little things in life. You know what I mean? Just learn to appreciate the little things. Like a hairline. Like this shit. Hairlines are not promised to us. You know what I mean? And this is what I, this is what I, knew, I knew. I needed to appreciate my hairline. I was at a family function not that long ago, right? One of my uncle walks in. Bald as fuck. I look to my right, another uncle walks in, bald as fuck. My brother walks in, he's only three years older than me. He's got dreadlocks down his back, but his hairline started behind his ears. And I was like, yo, I'm in a versus battle against genetics. Like this shit, shit is crazy, man. And I'm, I'm, and I'm glad, I'm just glad my hairline is like Omarion. That shit touch, you know what I mean? Like, cause I don't know what I would look like bald. Like this shit. I think I would look weird bald. Like, I'm already light-skinned, and you can't be light-skinned and bald. You know what I mean? Like, what if my head is more slanted than I think it is, and I'm out here looking like a thumb? Like... <laughs> or what if my head is more round than I think it is, and I'm out here looking like a chickpea? You know what I mean? 
go out in the summertime, get a little bit of a tan, now I look like a grapefruit? Like, nah, man. If I were to go bald, though, I'm happy that my beard connects, right? Like, I'm not trying to beard shame anybody, but there's a lot of guys out here. There's a lot of guys out here, and their beards look like QR codes. You know somebody like that, don't you? Yeah, people just walk up to you, like, try to scan it, and it says 404, not found. Like, it's shit. It's crazy, man. I'm the last man in my family with a hairline that connects, you know? I'm, I'm breaking generational curses, you know what I mean? And I think that's how much time I got left. I, you got a minute and a half. I got a minute and a half? Shit. All right, good shit. I got plenty of time. Okay, so like I said, I'm from the South Side, Jamaica, Queens, and uh, a lot of people in my neighborhood are rappers, right? But was not a lot of good rappers in my neighborhood, right? Like sometimes they'd be like, yo, download my mixtape. I'll be like, let me spit some bars for me right now. And they'd be like, yo, it's cold outside. Icicle. It's way too tired. Bicycle. I'm like, you know, shut the fuck up and write some real lyrics. But if I turn on the radio, mainstream hip hop isn't that much better. Like one of my favorite rappers doesn't say shit. He just takes random sentences, puts it together somehow to hit song. It's a guy by the name of Two Chains. Y'all listen to Two Chains? Yeah. If you ever went to a Two Chains concert, it goes a little something like this, like the beat drop is like. <laughs> two Chains, Two Chains, you can't see. Your girl, she ain't fancy. Nurse Joy, Pokemon, your girl look like Chansey. First day of school and I'm sorry. My teacher, she boring. Only reason I came to class was to show off my new Jordans. Two chains I'm wearing. Your girl, she keeps staring. Made her change her identity. Now her name is Karen. All I want for my birthday is a big booty hoe. All I want for my birthday is a big booty hoe.